Senator Johnson? Uh, I agree with everything John said. I would add one important point. There was a decision in 1973 of the Supreme Court called Buckley versus Vallejo, which equated yeah. campaign contributions and campaign spending to First Amendment protected speech. To me, I mean, we'd, we'd gone for decades and decades and with rules that said, for example, you couldn't have corporate contributions and that sort of thing. But what this has done is, you know, when I first ran in uh, 1972, we had a campaign finance law. It uh, limited the amount of contributions, the amount you could spend, the amount a, a rich person could spend on his own campaign, et cetera. And they were good rules, and they allowed enough money. But when they took all the limits off under Buckley versus Vallejo, now you have these races that I think in Louisiana they're talking about, what, $10 million a candidate, something like that. That is absolutely absurd. It is, uh, it is corrupting, not in the sense that politicians are necessarily corrupt, but the system becomes corrupt because every minute politicians have to be raising money. I mean, it used to be that uh, in the Senate with a six-year term, you'd really start politicking uh, the year before the election. Maybe if you had, if you were vulnerable, maybe two years. Now you're elected and you immediately start having fundraisers and you have them like every weekend. And instead of uh, being with your colleagues, I mean, we used to, John and I used to go off on tennis matches and that sort of thing all the time. Now you'd have to be raising money. The only way to, to get around that, I think, is with a constitutional amendment, and the chances of that are almost zero. I mean, you've heard of the McCain-Feingold law, which I voted for, but which, because of the strictures of the, of the Constitution, or, or those decisions, you are, uh, there's not much you can do. And now the Supreme Court is, right as we speak, is deciding a case uh, that may enable corporations to give unlimited amounts of money. <laughs> if that happens, I mean, you know, can you imagine what, uh, 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 what a rich corporation could do if they got mad at somebody? And, you know, they wouldn't even have to give it in their own name. They could, they could give it to the citizens for good government, and they could spend millions of dollars. And how do you think that would influence the members of Congress, you know, who would not be anxious to make them mad. So I, I, I very much agree with what John said about uh, the uh, gerrymandering of districts B because uh, it used to be that you'd have to sort of represent, uh, you know, everybody. You'd have to, you'd have a few liberals and a few uh, conservatives and some middles and the blacks and whites and all the rest. And now they've got uh, purified districts that are, you know, purely one thing or the other, and that has, uh, that has affected the state. Uh, so it, it's, I don't know what we can do about it, John, uh, other than uh, uh, have some constitutional amendments. Well, uh, one thing that could be done, I tried to get an all-Cajun district, but I never could get one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, one thing you could take the, the uh, Michael, you could take the, uh, the redistricting out of the hands of the elected officials, and that'd be, that's a hard thing to give up because it's self-preservation. But some states and some uh, have, have toyed with the idea of having a select group of, of judges or some people who don't, aren't running to, to draw the districts according to the makeup of the state so that the districts fairly, to the extent that they can, reflect the whole state at large and that they're not created for political reasons. You could have a computer designed to congressional districts. Now that would take politics out of it completely, and I don't think that's really the right thing to do. I mean, you ought to have some political, not just to get people reelected, but reflective of the state as a whole politically, and not just hard numbers. But you could theoretically do it by a computer and have a, some really great non-political districts that were fairly evenly divided between liberals, conservatives, moderates, uh, Republicans, and Democrats. 
and then you'd be forcing members of the legislature to really look at all sides when they when they vote. It's not like that right now at all. I mean, you got really very safe congressional districts. You know, we got 435 members of Congress. They were saying the last time, how many were compared? How many? About 20 out of 400, listen to this, 435 congressional districts. They said about 20 of them were really competitive because all the rest of them were in safe districts. And, you know, you try, you know, it's very difficult to get a compromise going if everybody knows they don't have to worry about the other side. That's, that's a real problem. 